gorgeous. Damn, right here. thanks, man. This is hey, my pleasure. Unreal. <laughs> Dude, and we're not even at the top yet. The city of Tokyo has been on my list of cities to visit for as long as I can remember. And now that COVID restrictions have been lifted, it's time to make that dream a reality. Just had to pop into the pharmacy for a second. Uh, it's actually quite cool here in Japan, about 18 degrees, which is quite refreshing compared to Kaohsiung. Uh, the air is a bit drier, so I wanted to pick up some lip medication. But yeah, this is a really neat area. It's kind of a this huge bustling market right underneath the railroad tracks. Uh, so every couple of minutes you just hear these trains going by above and obviously very busy here, packed. And I'm gonna head downtown a little bit to Korajuku to meet up with my Canadian friend. We have arrived to Takeshita Dori, and this is my buddy Dan. Hey there. We've known each other how many years? Gosh. Uh, I gotta say 12, at least. 14? Yeah, right, ever since university. Ever since McMaster University. He, uh, he moved in right in the bedroom across from me, so we've been friends ever since. Ever since. And how long have you been living in Japan? Uh, I, I gotta say at this point about seven years or so. Seven years. It's been a good ride. Yeah, so he's been the vigilant and excellent tour guide so far in the city. <laughs> he just keeps on taking us to these wonderful little areas of Tokyo. So my audience in Taiwan will be happy to see this. Taiwan number one, Shinfu Tang, which is of course the famous bubble tea restaurant. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you might want to do a little shopping trip before you come to this part of the town because practically everyone looks like they could be in like the Matrix, something like that, super fashionable. Anyway, so you can see here, uh, just on this overpass, and we met up with my buddy Pat, also from Owen Sound, Ontario, where I'm from. So yeah, how long have you been in Tokyo? Uh, three years. Three years? Yeah. Nice. But it's been COVID the whole time, so it's been a bit tough. So this is kind of like, the first time we ever get to experience the real Japan. Yeah. In a way. Yeah, man. And what I really love about Tokyo so far is like the weather, it almost feels a bit like Canada in September, maybe. A little bit, right? Yeah, it's like it's like permafall almost. Permafall. Yeah, which is really beautiful in the wintertime. All right, so this is something called Cat Street, uh, but they said there aren't actually any cats here. It's just a nickname. I think Tokyo is one of those cities where every single neighborhood is so unique. And in the past, it used to be actually different cities and now they've all uh, conglomerated into the greater Tokyo area so yeah you just hop on the, the subway for a couple of stops and suddenly everything's different more modern more traditional feels like you could spend a year in the city and never visit the same place twice so I've just learned that in Japan they have something it's like a hangover cure you drink this before you start drinking for the night and apparently it nullifies your hangover the next morning we shall see if that's it's actually the uh, case. Ooh, it tastes like cough syrup. Deep hmm. yellow. Must work. <laughs> so yeah, we had some excellent burgers, like total American style hamburgers, Wagyu, really, really delicious. This is obviously a pretty touristy area. You can kind of see there's just restaurant after restaurant after restaurant. You can get all kinds of delicious Japanese food. And it's a little, as I said, touristy. We're paying street prices, but that's okay. You get what you pay for, and this is like real Shibuya atmosphere down here, right? So here we are in the Shibuya Yokocho. And Yokocho is a Japanese word which basically means exactly what you can see. Just an incredibly narrow street full of, you know, this street is probably 100 meters long. There might be 20 or 30 little restaurants. Each restaurant holds maybe six or seven people. And you just pop in here for a drink or a little meal with your friends. And yeah, this is a Japanese yokocho. Really, really beautiful. Like this is what you imagine Japan looking like. So now we are heading to Shinjuku, another interesting neighborhood here in Tokyo. So you're saying this is kind of like the old school 
red light district of yeah. Tokyo. Yeah. But I don't think it's quite as bad as people say it is, but yeah, it's like you gotta be careful about where you go and stuff like that. Gotcha. This is the, the greasy Tokyo of days long gone. The greasy <laughs> Tokyo of days long gone. But it's still here somehow. Somehow it survived. It survived. Okay, and before we get to the second half of this video, where we explore some of the more tranquil and traditional areas of Tokyo, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is NordVPN. So for me, one of the most frustrating aspects about living overseas is that when I go to a website, particularly a very popular international website, such as yahoo.com, it automatically defaults to the Taiwanese version, which of course is all in Chinese. And oftentimes I can't even figure out how to turn it back into English. But check this out, I load up my NordVPN app, quick connect to Canada, which literally only takes a couple of seconds, type in that name one more time, yahoo.com, and voila, now I am on the Canadian version of the website, all in English. And also, you know me, I'm Canadian, I love watching my hockey games, and even when I'm traveling overseas, even in places like Japan, I love to keep updated on what my favorite hockey teams are doing. But look at this, I go to tsn.ca, I load up a couple of highlight packs, and unfortunately, because I'm not currently living in Canada, I'm not able to watch this content. Very, very frustrating. And again, I just load up my NordVPN app, quick connect to Canada, refresh my screen, and now I'm watching highlights from the Edmonton Oilers versus the Minnesota Wild. No problem at all, totally easy. Of course, there is always the added benefit of protecting your private information, protecting your IP address from companies or advertisers, or even people who are trying to steal your information. There are so many different ways that NordVPN will make your life feel more safe and secure. So right now, head over to nordvpn.com slash Wes Davies. That's my promo code, Wes Davies, and you will be offered a 63% discount on a two-year plan plus an additional four months completely for free. Of course, there's also a 30-day money-back guarantee. So use NordVPN because this deal is amazing. They are the best in the game. There are so many different ways you can use this service and of course they sponsor my channel. So I really, really appreciate all the support from NordVPN. So don't sleep on this deal because it won't last forever. Just head over to nordvpn.com slash West Davies or use West Davies, my promo code at checkout. Make sure you check out all the information that I will post down below. Thank you Nord for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to Japan. Long story short, we didn't really leave the neighborhood. This afternoon we went shopping, had to pick up some cool Tokyo threads. So now I don't look like someone from Kaohsiung anymore. <laughs> in this sea of fashionable people. Now we're gonna go check out Tokyo Tower. One of the good things about Tokyo is there are about a million different subway lines, train lines, tram lines, whatever you want. You can essentially get anywhere in the city at any time. Somebody just dumps spaghetti all over the city. There's, I don't know, I mean, compared to Kaohsiung, which has one, two, and then the new green line, this one would take a year to figure out successfully. So there it is. They call it the Eiffel Tower of Tokyo, Tokyo Tower. The verdict is we can go up, it's not closed, and it only costs 260 NT, 1,200 yen, to go up uh, to the observation deck right here. And yeah, let's see how the elevator compares to Taipei 101. The Taipei 101 I think is the fastest in the world, so this one's probably just gonna be more of a leisurely ride up to the top. So I did some research, construction was completed in 1958. It's about 330 meters tall and it was primarily built as a radio tower. So right at the top, it's got a huge dish that broadcasts TV and radio all throughout Tokyo. And it was actually built to resemble the Eiffel Tower in France. So it's got that kind of familiar lattice construction design.
Okay, unfortunately last day in Tokyo. Fly out tomorrow, but we've got a big exciting day today. Heading to Kamakura. Kamakura. It's a couple hours outside of Tokyo by train. So that's where we're heading now. And gonna meet up with Dan and Pat and hopefully have a, a beautiful, nice, sunny day just outside of Tokyo City. That was quite the train ride. It was about an hour, maybe. And we've arrived at uh, Kamakura Station. So as far as I can tell, Kamakura is almost like a little vacation town. Just a pleasant place that you can come to outside of Tokyo, escape that busy Tokyo life. So yeah, it looks very, very nice so far. Uh, I don't know, the, the kids are in these really cute uniforms out here in the countryside. And we're gonna go meet up with Dan and Pat. All right, met up with Dan at the Family Mart, and you were theorizing we yeah. might be able to see Fujisan today. Absolutely, there is not a cloud in the sky. Yeah. Bright blue, beautiful. And once we climb up that mountain on mm. Enoshima Island, okay, it's a straight line over to it. Cool, that'd be quite the sight. Oh yeah. This is a uh, habanero chicken from Family Mart. Unbelievable, yeah, unbelievable. Mm. Oh man. Tell me about it, right? As good as any crispy chicken you can get. Anyway. Oh yeah, and it's spicy. It's spicy, it's so good. It's beautiful. This place is a little bit more traditional Japan. Absolutely, and you can see, just look at this, this lineup of beautiful <laughs> gates all the way to a giant. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Giant traditional temple. We're also gonna get into some traditional snacks too, I'm hoping. This is like a fish cake imbued with the magic of cheese, a little bit of deep frying, and a little bit of kamakura magic. Oh my god. There's cheese on the inside oh, of it. Oh, gotcha. Ingenuity, how did, how did they know? <laughs> is it golden hour? Dan has graciously treated us to the tickets to the Daibutsu, which is the Great Buddha. The Daibutsu, the Great Buddha. Sitting here at a wonderful, shocking hundred. No, I'm just kidding. It's uh, it's only 13 meters tall. I think this is the third incarnation of, of the Buddha as well, because there was a storm that knocked it out in the 1300s, and an earthquake and another storm that knocked it out. And you know how it's just framed so beautifully by yeah. the trees around it, the empty space, which is of course at the highest premium here in Japan. And even this like latest incarnation, right? Is up to 700 years old, right here. The fact that we pay, you know, a little bit of 300 yen to visit it, peanuts. Dan, thanks man. This is hey, my pleasure. Unreal. <laughs> Dude, and we're not even at the top yet. We got off the train and we got some Kamakura ginger highball. Ginger highballs, the local highball. Yeah, local highball. Can't come to Kamakura without having the local ginger highball. I also love the cat art. It's beautiful, huh? See. Yeah. Big cat person. All right, you ready? Yeah. And as you can see, it is golden hour. <laughs> come by. Come by. Come by. Come by. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is delicious. I like how it's not too sweet. No, the ginger really like cuts through. Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful that afternoon drink. That is nice afternoon ginger beer. Mm. And we say hello to Jamie Davies and Don Davies We too. specifically say hello specifically to Jamie say hi. and Don yeah. Davies, yeah. who we love very much. Dearly. Oh, this is gorgeous. Look at this. I remember there was a time, like, because we grew up in Owen Sound, small yeah. town in Canada. And there was a time where like, you couldn't believe, you couldn't imagine being somewhere like this. No. I had this moment, I remember I was in Taiwan actually in a hot spring in Taiwan 
And I remember just looking at the mountains and thinking like, I never thought I would be in a place like this ever. Mm -hmm. And then I just never wanted to stop doing that. And that's why like, it's been about eight years now and we're still doing it. And we still love it. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Still as, as happy now as I ever was. Yeah. That's a nice shot there. Here we are at the top of Inoshima and I don't know, the timing just worked out perfectly because we can see right there, right behind me, that is Fuji San, Fuji Mountain, Mount Fuji. Yeah, what a wonderful trip. You guys saw the video. I would highly recommend Japan now that all the borders have opened back up. Japan is letting people in, Taiwan is letting people in. Finally, three years later, maybe we can start living our lives normally again. That's a very good thing in my books. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Feel free to leave any comments down below of your favorite places in Japan. I will certainly be back. And I want to say thank you to Dan, thank you to Evelyn, and thank you to Pat. You three being here with me, it's just made this trip so worthwhile and so special and I'll remember this forever. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and uh, yeah. Love you, buddy. Love you too, man. Dan. Get in here, bud. Get in hey. Here. All right, guys. Thanks. See you yeah. later.